13 hits for the offense, four home runs, and Jordy Ball and Hope Troutwine were fantastic. As the first pitch from Jordy Ball is headed home, and it's a bouncer towards third. Tough play for John, throws. Got her. Nice stretch over at first. First pitch swinging for Carly Spellhog, and there's one away. Here's a look at the Sooner defense. Alyssa Brito is in left, Jada Coleman is in center, Riley Boone is in right. With Jana Johns, Grace Lyons, Tiara Jennings, and Taylor Snow. Kenzie Hansen and Jordy Ball, the battery. First pitch is up high to Michaela Ramos. One ball and no strikes to the catcher, Ramos. Good pitch right on the inside corner. One ball, one strike. Just underway and ground out by Carly Spellhawk. Now here's Michaela Ramos, the catcher. 1-1 one, one pitch, swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes. The pitch. Low and in. Two balls, two strikes. Jordy Ball looking the part all season long. Here's the two ball, two strike pitch from the Sooner freshman headed home. Swing and a miss, strike three, two away. Chalk up for Jordy Ball on the season. Well, the strikeout numbers are beyond impressive so far for Jordy Ball in 2022, but she made this one look pretty, pretty easy. That is officially 169. Next one, math, 170. Look at that, foot stays dragged. Beautiful. Two way for Angelina Allen, the first baseman, and it misses low for ball one. One ball and no strikes. Here's the pitch to Allen. Caught that outside corner. One ball, one strike. We apologize for those of you on the radio side. They didn't have the play-by-play -play feed. Some will say that it was the most incredible 10 minutes of radio they've ever heard. I don't know if it was that long or not. One ball, one strike. Allen, the left-handed hitting first baseman, waits. Ball brings it home. Line shot foul. The crowd mice are hopping tonight. You're getting a little sense of everything. That energy from the Sooner dugout, that Iowa State dugout is nonstop all game long. They don't, they don't let up. Doubt the Sooners will either. Here's the one-two pitch. Just misses a little low. Home plate umpire tonight is Terry Holt. Haley Young over at first, Steve Gold at third. Umpire introductions. Presented by Century Roofing. CenturyRoofingOK.com. Ball looking to make quick work of Iowa State here in the first inning. The 2 2 pitch. Check on a swing up and away. They're going to appeal with the third base umpire, though there's really no need to. And Terry Holt was fire coming out from behind the play. Full count.
Jordy brings it home. Line shot foul again. The line shot was foul on the new netting that was secured behind home plate and up the third and first base lines to protect the fans and the dugout. Our last home series, it faltered. Thanks to our Trophy Club members, got a new net here in Marita Hines Field. 3 2 pitch. Bounced off of Allen and foul. It's not the only thing that's new. Wow, that popped up and caught her right on her own. back arm. Look like. We have new windows in the press box. It is a glorious day. Jordy looking to make quick work of Iowa State. Just misses. Ball four on the outside corner. And for Jordy Ball, on her 23rd walk of the season. Well, our weather as always is presented by the Trails Golf Club in Oklahoma. Trailsgolf.com. Windy. Windy, windy, windy. There is some threat of severe weather, though the hopes are that that stair is clear of us until tomorrow night. Wind, wind, wind. Malaysia Ochoa digs in from the left side of the plate, takes the first pitch a little up, ball one. But it's hard to tell sometimes. You get the sense if you get something up to right field, it's getting out of here. In fact, that might even be the case to center right now as well. Here's the 1 0 pitch to the right fielder Ochoa, and it misses low and away. Freshman Ochoa hitting 328 on the season. Jamie Pinkerton, Iowa State's head coach, has six starters in this Iowa State lineup that have played every single game. The 2-0 pitch caught the outside corner, two balls and one strike. The runner at first is Angelina Allen. Jordy Ball again trying to get the Sooners back in the dugout. The 2-1 pitch. Line drive, foul down the left field line, just foul. Just underway in Norman, yes, earlier start, playing two games. DJ Sanchez will join us on the broadcast coming up in mere moments. Scoreless game so far between Oklahoma and Iowa State. Thanks for joining us, Sooner Sports TV. On an historic weekend on campus for OU Athletics. Here's the 2-2 from Ball. Swing and a miss. Inning over. Strikeout number two. 7-13 on the season for Ellie. Face the Sooners before. The time is called in the midst of that pitch almost. Here's the 0-1 to Jada, a little up. Everyone in, everyone in. The corners pond is in tight at third, with Allen in tight at first. Deep at short is Ranches and Simpson at second. One ball, one strike. Out straight back. Here's Ellie Spellhog getting the start for Iowa State. The numbers won't wow you, but she has had some big time performances this year for the Cyclones. One, two. This is outside two balls and two strikes. Junior out of Bettendorf, Iowa. Powerful right arm. Two balls and two strikes. The pitch to Coleman. No ball three. Yeah. 
Spellong went five innings two weeks ago against Iowa State. Gave up five runs on eight hits. The 3-2 pitch misses outside. Ball four. Jada Coleman is aboard. And what a run she's been on in the midst of this 10-game hitting streak. She went three for four with a run scored against UNT on Wednesday, and she's aboard to start this game with a walk. Here's Alo. The Sooner slugger is number one in the country in home runs. Well, let's see, she's battling for the top spot in home runs. I have to check my NCAA stats update. Uh, she digs in with Coleman aboard, and nobody out in the scoreless game. First pitch is low for ball one. The average is jaw dropping, 485. 21 home runs, 32 extra base hit, 50 runs batted in, 49 runs scored, 36 walks. Ground ball back to Spellhawk, could be two to second for one to first. Oh, they got it. A 1-4-3 double play, even with the clutch out of the glove of Spellhog. And there's two outs for T.R.A. Jennings. A nice smooth play by Spellhog. And there's two outs for T.R.A. Jennings had a rough weekend against Texas. There's really no way around it. But man, as she bounced back in a big way on Wednesday night. Five runs batted in as the first pitch is in for a strike. Hit a couple home runs. Finished three for four with five runs batted in. Two runs scored. <laughs> Leo one pitch. Is a line drive to right field, but caught. Nice play by Ochoa, who was positioned perfectly, and that ends things quickly. In the I'll tell you what, you've seen it. You know it. These Iowa State teams, they're no yes. joke. They come to play. They do. They always have. It's. I think sometimes, too, they, they get this chip on their shoulder that people underestimate them. First pitch fouled off. But they always come out, swing the bat well, play the game, play the game clean, and they catch people by surprise at times. Alicia Ranchez, their junior shortstop. You think about big shoes to fill at shortstop for Ranchez. Sammy Williams was the all-time leading hitter in Iowa State history. The 0-1 pitch swing and a miss on the rise, 0-2. And she was the heart and soul of this team. And now <laughs> you're basically assigned with going out to try to replace her and it's not easy well, that's, that's not easy to do at any point but let alone i mean the shortstop so much is kind of the the heartbeat of the infield they're the leader and this is an iowa state team that we've seen in the last couple of years really come on strong ground ball to second jennings up with it throws and there's one away but we're seeing that same team here walking into norman 500 and you know, I'd like to say that that's probably not what this team had in mind walking into this season. Yeah. Well, let's get to your keys to the game, DJ, brought to you by Riverwind Casino. Riverwind Casino, home to a luxury hotel, fine dining, and never-ending rewards. Keys to a Sooner victory, DJ. You know, today, offensively, the Sooners need to control the count. They need to see good pitches. We've got some wind playing a factor here, so use the ground and working the count. But control momentum. We were just talking about how this Iowa State team, sometimes people don't take them. I'm not going to use the word seriously, but they walk into the game thinking, uh, we're gonna we're gonna beat Iowa State. This mm -hmm. is an Iowa State team that that plays the game well. I think their record doesn't always necessarily show that. So control the momentum. First pitch foul by Kaylee Pond, the third baseman. Keeps the game brought to you by Riverwind. Riverwind Casino. The 0-1 pitch. A good spot. Called strike on the inside corner. That was a unique strike zone we had on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that pitch was a strike, sometimes it wasn't. That's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. If it's going to be a strike, it's oh. a strike. If it's not a strike, call it a ball, but call it a ball the whole game so at <laughs> least we know. Here's the 0-2 pitch. A little out. One ball, two strikes. 
Pumped to be with you on this gorgeous evening. And that's me being a fan of wind and overcast <laughs> skies. <laughs> For me, this is fantastic. I'll take it. It's warm. I'll take it. The one, two. Whoa, just missed on the outer edge. Two balls and two strikes. I can tell you what, that pitch just missed. But if Jordy Ball, at any point in this game, gets this call on the chalk in the river, again, it's a ball. But you hammer the zone, you're going to start to see that zone expand. If she starts getting that call, it's going to be a tough night for the Cyclones. Bouncer towards the right side. What a play by Jordy Ball, who reached up, snagged it, tosses to first, one away. Gotta love a pitcher that fields her position. Trying to use the ground. High hopper, a lot of times we see that kind of go into no man's land, but great job by Jordy Ball bouncing off the mound and getting it done herself. Two-way. As here's Casey Simpson. The second baseman ball looking to make it a one, two, three inning. First pitch is on the inside corner, strike one. Simpson for Iowa State. With all the experience, one of three seniors that starts for this Cyclone squad. No one pitch. Popped up, left side. That's Jana John's territory. Makes it look easy and ends a rather fast top half of the second inning. The cleanup hitter Grace Lyons will lead things off for Oklahoma in a scoreless game. Oh, it is a big weekend in college softball beyond just this OU Iowa State series. The 0-1 misses a little out. One ball, one strike. We've got a massive series in Aus or excuse me, in Stillwater, where they decided they're not going to risk moving their Sunday game. Their Friday, Saturday, Sunday between OSU and Texas. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Caught that outside corner. One ball, two strikes to Grace Lyons, who is on fire. Season average up to 417. Third on the team with 17 home runs. 45 runs batted in. She has been huge. One, two fouled off. And just, again, the consistency. Not that Grace Lyons has not been consistent her whole career, but hitting over 400, what she's doing in that four slot. We haven't always seen her in the middle of this OU lineup. So getting the RBIs, coming up clutch with runners in scoring position. We talk about this entire OU lineup. Grace Lyons is on a senior campaign, and it's really awesome to see. The one, two, misses low and in, and the rest of the country is noticing it too. She was one of 25 finalists for the USA Softball Player of the Year. That list was very OU heavy. The 2 2 pitch is grounded back up the middle. Diving play made by Simpson to save it from getting to the outfield, but she won't have a play at first. It's an infield single, and the leadoff hitter is aboard. Man, the streak she has been on, DJ yes. Sanchez, has been something else. That's just ridiculous. And again, she's doing it in all parts of the field. She's, we're seeing her hit the long ball. She's hitting doubles off the wall. And again, using the ground when she needs to, like we just saw her do there with the leadoff single, trying to get some things going here in the top, or excuse me, in the bottom of the second for the Sooners. Them putting that zero in the bottom of the second is throwing me off on the scoreboard. A spell <laughs> I hog. should know better. We're I mean, home. I should too. It's but my fault. It's, it, I've done it twice already. <laughs> Here's the first pitch to Hanson, and it's low for ball. You know, I've been talking about how hot Grace Lyons was. She was actually 0 for 5 over the last two games after that nine-game hitting streak. Where during that nine-game hitting streak, she ended up with nine of her 17 home runs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on the season. Here's Hanson. 317 average. Not where you would typically see Kinsey is the 1-0 pitches line foul. She's been a warrior this year. She's fought through a lot. And it's really, really good to see her back to 100% right now for OU. Yeah, and what I love about it is, again, this has been a battle 
up to now for Kinsey Hansen, but we're in we're in the middle of April and we are getting to the point where I am so excited because we're going to see Kinsey Hansen in full form at the point of the season when it really, really counts. Postseason, moving into regionals, super Line. regionals. Line drive fouled on the right side. You can't ask much more than that. After no. everything she's done. Yeah. It's really, it's really cool to see. And, and it's funny because there's a story for everyone in this lineup mm -hmm. and <laughs> where it's not just, ah, you know, it kind of plateaued. It's either they've hit these incredible high highs or in some cases a very frustrating low. It's been all or nothing. One, two pitch for Hanson. Wild wow, pitch all the way to the backstop. There goes the Lions off to second. That thing was moving. I can see. Getting a little twisted up, a little crossed up by Ramos. And it looked like she was expecting something. Yes, like and just getting away. <laughs> thinking down and out and easy to get away when it ends up completely opposite direction. Runner in scoring position here for Oklahoma in the bottom of the second. Up and away again. Count is full. Three balls and two strikes. Good to see Hansen seeing a lot of pitches. It's going to be really important against Spellhog making her throw strikes. She's struck out hitters, but she also has decently high walk numbers. There's a bouncer to the right side. Simpson backs up on him, makes the play, retires Hanson. And as Johns comes to the plate, Lions is able to advance to third. Well, you and Iowa State scoreless here in the bottom of the second inning. Sooners, though, have the potential first run of the game, standing 60 feet away. It's Jana Johns, who made one of the best plays I've ever seen against North Texas on Wednesday night. It was unbelievable. I'm still in shock. In fact, I was so shocked by it, I said it was a hit off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> the disrespect level was high. But Jana said, I'll show you. First pitch is in for a strike. Johns hitting 302 on the season. Nine home runs which would be good for second on Iowa State's team. Only the fifth best number for the Sooners. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Johns. Up and in. You got to be careful if you're coming up and in, Ellie Spellhog, to Jana Johns, because she has a magical magnet that just seems to suck the ball right to her. <laughs> Leads the team and hit by pitches this season. Actually tied for the team lead. Jocelyn's been hit seven times this year. And so is Jana Johns. wonder how many of those are, we're not going to throw four pitches. Just throw one and be done with it. <laughs> the 1-1 one, one pitch, a mighty cut right through it, a ball and two strikes. It's a good point by our producer, Grant Way, the all-time hit-by-pitch leader in Sooner softball history, is Kaylee Clifton. It is. And she did wear number 20. No one's ever going to wear that number again after Jana leaves. The one-two is low for ball two and two. Because <laughs> it hurts. The bruising. It's part painful. of it. It's like a single. <laughs> Take it. And they're starting seven, four, six, eight. Iowa State has some players who have wore a few pitches on the inside <laughs> corner, too. Here's the two-two pitch to Johns. Pop foul down the right side. That'll get out of play. Got on a swivel over there. I thought he was going to catch it with his hat. I, I thought he was, too. Got to be careful. Jana on Wednesday night against North Texas went one for three with a run scored in an RBI. One for two with a couple of RBI in that game against Texas. Here's a ground ball up the middle of the center field, a base hit. Jana Johns gets the party started with an RBI single back up the middle, and it's one zip Sooners. And that was just a good piece of hitting. It was great at bat again. Sooners are seeing a lot of pitches and making Spellhog come into the zone. Jana John staying on top of that on a pitch up in the zone and using the ground. Great piece of hitting. Got to love the manufacturing of a run early in the game. Oh, you love to yes. see it. Love to see it. Not many people a bigger fan of the manufactured <laughs> run than DJ Sanchez. I'll talk about it every day if I can. <laughs> 
Taylor Snow is is it a bit of a rut at the plate? First pitch swing and a miss. Runner goes. Late jump by Johns, but the throw not in time. In fact, it I don't know if Jana Johns caught ranches by surprise, but no one was near the bag for a bit. And I think we saw a little bit of a run and hit, which puts your runner in motion, mm -hmm. but it's also, it's your runner's job is to peek in. I mean, on a hit and run, your job's to peek in too, but it's, you have a little bit of that. It's not that automatic, like a hit and run, as much as we would see on a run and hit and still getting that protection from the batter and hailing snow. Cause she was definitely looking back in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and. Almost too much. Yeah, Ramos' throw was well off the mark. The 0-2 here to Neeners is up and away. One ball, two strikes. You know, it's almost a rite of passage that on the celebration day for your senior day that you hit a home run. No pressure, Taylor Snow. She does have three of them so far on the season. Here's the 1-2. Line drive off the glove of the third baseman. Pond, it's a base hit. No play at first. Good job by Pond to not allow it to get too far away from her. Hustled down and got it in foul territory. Let's await the ruling. Yep, they've, well, hits on the board. I think that's a hit. I think so. I mean, she comes up with that. It's a great play. It's catching her on the backhand. Jamie Pinkerton's hustling out to have a quick conversation with Ellie Spellhog in the circle. All right, they have indeed, well, hold on, I'm not yet on the official stats, but if indeed it is ruled a hit, which it looks like it is, that breaks an 0 for 15 skid for Taylor yes. Snow. So we can not worry about speaking of that again. And if anything has been pretty obvious to me so far this season, is once Kaylin Snow gets going, look out. So maybe this could be the start of another big hot streak for Taylor Snow. Jamie Pinkerton makes his way back to the Iowa State dugout. Hattie Gasso looks on as Jana John stands at third. Taylor Snow at first. Another reason why Jamie Pinkerton was probably out there was to make sure they understand the first and third situations. Yes. I'm sure they've been preparing for it like crazy. Yeah, and, and we're going to see OU run it here. I can almost guarantee it. But I think also, too, just trying to slow the game down a little bit. OU is in complete control of this right now, and not by using the long ball. We've seen two singles, moving a runner, a wild pitch, a stolen base. Bunch shown by Brito. They'll throw down, though it's cut off. And a nice play by Taylor Snow to not stop because Simpson, the second baseman, came in front of the bag to cut it off and then shoveled it to Ranchez covering after making sure that Johns wasn't breaking from third. I like that wrinkle, but it worked in favor of the Sooners. A one ball, no strike uh, count to our Love's Travel Stops player to watch today, Alyssa Brito. And she takes the strike, one and one. How about these numbers on Brito for you? Eight for her last 15 for the Oklahoma Sooners. She had a home run or two in the last Five home I runs in that run. That's not too there. bad. <laughs> 11 on the season. Chance to blow this game open early. Instead, she'll take the 1-1 pitch low and away. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, she's, you, she's been on fire. If you guys could see the smile on the face T.J. Sanchez with these manufactured runs and stolen bases right now. The 2-1 pitch. Ground ball to third. We're going to have a play at the plate. Johns will get caught in a rundown. She'll slide back in safely at third. Now headed back to second is Snow. We've got ourselves a good old-fashioned Donnie Brook. Here comes Johns home. She's going to be thrown out. They tagged out Snow at second. Are we going to get obstruction? Time is called. Cats and dogs living together. Chaos everywhere. Patty Gasso is going to challenge obstruction, but the inning is over. After some base running over aggressiveness has costed the Sooners here in the bottom of the second inning. We're going to challenge obstruction at home plate. 
How and many obstru obstruction calls have you seen reviewed this year? This is the first one that yeah. I... No, I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize. The um, Texas game was obstruction that was being challenged. So this is the second time the Sooners have. So as Johns is getting back to third, she's safe. Let's see. The obstruction might be right. No. So Snow is going to be out regardless at second. Oh, and see, you have a non-catcher, too, at the plate, DJ, so that makes it a little bit tough. Here's the thing. She's straddled across the plate before she has the ball, which, in theory, Angelina you Allen, by the way, yes. the first baseman. Rule book with a the ball there low in the dirt, but rule book reading, mm -hmm. is it obstruction? Yes. Yeah. Do we see that particular type of obstruction get called? Not very often, usually no. So, Century Roofing, OK.com. Century Roofing on guard for Oklahoma brings you our umpire introductions. And Terry Holt, Kaylee Young, and Steve Gold, apparently one for one in reviews. Ground ball off the glove of Jana Johns at third. And Skylar Ramos is going to lead off the third inning for Iowa State by reaching on what is usually a play that Jana Johns makes. Pretty good pitch there by Jordy Ball, down and out. Just catching Jana Johns a little high. We usually see Jana Johns working low off the ground and coming up to catch that hop. Here's Natalie Wellett. First pitch is low for a ball. Yeah. We're going to think about that play a lot, but it looked like Ramos may have had the ball in her glove, or pardon me, it wasn't Ramos, the first baseman, Allen, may have had the ball in her glove before she really had the opportunity to slide in front of the play. Here's a bunt back to ball, so we'll have one play, and that's the first, and the sacrifice works to perfection. Third inning shout-outs. Is always brought to you in part by physical, spell different because we are different. And the Sooner Club, the Trophy Club, excuse me, Soonersports.com slash Trophy Club. Log on and join today. One zip Sooners. We're in the third inning, top of the third. Iowa State has a runner in scoring position for the first time today. After a single. I'll leave this inning off. First pitch, swing and a miss. Strike one. So Ramos, Skylar Ramos stands at second, indeed ruled a single. That was a hard hit ball down the line. It was, too. and I I talk about Jan. I think I expect Jana Johns to make that play because she is so good defensively. That is that's a base hit on 99% of third basemen usually. And the fact that we expect her to come up with that play shows us how good Jana Johns is. The balls and two strikes. Carly Spellhog, back in the, she's stepping back as the pitch is coming. Nice. Uh, good catch by our producer Grant Wade on that on the TV side of things. Spellhog grounded out to third in the first. She bats here with a runner at second and one out. It's one zip Sooners. Spellhog trying to pick pitches a little bit and Jordy Ball catching her off guard with the off speed. 0-2. Oh, Ooh, hit her. <laughs> you never want to hit anyone 0-2. As Spellhog reaches. Oh, catch her on the inside of the knee. Caught her on the right leg. She's going through it right now at first base. Under the watchful eye of Aaron Jackson, the volunteer assistant coach. One time Carroll College coach over at first base. And Iowa State has something cooking here in the third. And Michaela Ramos, their most dangerous hitter is at the plate. First pitch from ball, a little low for ball one. Kenzie Hansen going out. Again, Iowa State is a momentum team. They're going to have good at-bats. Ramos, as you said, good power numbers, 13 home runs, leading the team in RBIs. I mean, 
This is the position Iowa State wants to be in right now. So it's very important for Jordy Ball to be very precise with her locations, working ahead, not trying to do too much, but let her pitches move. So good job by Kinsey Hansen kind of recognizing the situation, going out to have a chat with the freshman. One ball and no strikes. First and second, Sooners lead one zip, but in a pickle here in the third. And there's a deep ball to left field. Brito on the run. She can't get there. It bounces off the wall. Coleman gets it back in, but not before Ramos scores from second. And Michaela Ramos has tied this game at one on a ball that nearly got out of here. What's crazy? Ramos got caught on her front foot, and you can see I say that as I watch it on the replay, but she didn't square that ball up completely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it caught her a little bit. She did not completely square the ball up, and it almost left the yard. Second and third, one out. It's a 1-1 game. First pitch is in for a strike to Angelina Allen. Kayla Ramos, we mentioned the most dangerous hitter on this Iowa State lineup. That's her 48th run batted in on the season. Now Iowa State has a chance to take the lead. Second and third, one out. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Just missed. And I mean, just missed. One ball, one strike. Let's not forget either. I mean, this is an Iowa State team that they have a win over Oklahoma State. They have a few banner wins, if you will. Haven't played a week's schedule. The 1-1 one -one is bounced foul at the plate. But if, if anything, I mean, you can hear them coming out of the dugout. This is an Iowa State team that is here to compete. This is all game, by the way. Iowa State, there's never any stop. They are rolling. I was watching highlights of their s Saturday loss against Texas Tech, and they were down 10 runs, and they were still juiced. <laughs> they got a chance here with runners at second and third and one out. The one-two pitch, swing and a miss. Oh, that was filthy. Two away, third strike out of the game for Jordy Ball. Huge out. Jordy Ball stepping up. And you already said it, Plank, filthy. Great location, working down in the zone. Angelina Allen never had a shot. Great location. All right, what's Patty Gasso's conversation here as she strides out to the circle? Strike her out? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, just trying to slow things down. Reminding, this is a veteran infield, but reminding your infield, do what you do, get the play at first, Take things easy. Jordy Ball, do, again, do what you do. Take a breath, throw strikes, work ahead. Don't try to be too cute here. We're going through right through the, the, the heart of the Iowa State lineup. Super so. visits this season are brought to you by Walden's Cleaners and Laundry, where the difference is quality. And here's Malaysia Ochoa. She is another one of those dangerous bats in this Iowa State lineup. Sophomore, second on the team with 30 runs batted in. It's hit four home runs. The first pitch is a little low and away for ball one. Ochoa, a strikeout victim back in the first inning. I see you guys on the shout outs at OU on the air. That's at OU on the air. Hit some of those coming up as the third inning progresses. One ball and no strikes. Oh, nice pitch, one and one. And Bybee in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Idaho. Did I say that right? Idaho Falls, Idaho? I think so. Sounds right. The Carbone family has checked in. Sarah's up at 5 a.m. watching from Shenzhen, China. I had to say that one very slow. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. A little up, two balls and a strike. One one game we're in the top of the third inning Iowa State threatening. I'm gonna talk about deep in the box. Ochoa is deep in the box. We're seeing that a lot from Iowa State. 
they look like they have a game plan with what they're trying to do off of Jordy Ball with where they are in their manipulation in, in the batter's box. 2-1 pitch misses one away, three. It seems to go against every tendency. Oh gosh, I'm trying not to sound like, like a former <laughs> player or anything, but it seems to go against any tendency you would have in the batter's box for some. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Line drive trouble. It's fair down the left field line. One run scores. Ramos is going to try to score. Instead, they'll throw to second. Same for second ahead of the tag of T.R.A. Jennings. Iowa State has taken a 3-1 lead here in the top of the third. And I got to tell you, what a good play by Brito coming up. Knowing she did not have a shot at the play at the plate. Coming up and firing to second base. Well, let's, let's see if we can get a replay. I mean, that was a really, really smart play by Brito. Yes. And the throw beat her by a mile. I mean, at this, you're just, as the umpire, you're basically saying that the tag was too high? I guess so. That looked like she was out. But regardless... It's 3-1, to one. Iowa State in the first pitch, swinging a miss from Alicia Ranchez, who grounded out to third her last time up. Credit Ochoa with a two-run double. Ranchez is a 276 hitter this season. The 1 pitch is a little up, one ball, one strike. That wind picks up blowing out to center field. Mm -hmm. Sooners have had some chances early in this game, but the double play has killed them offensively. Yeah, I mean, it's just, talking about the wind, take the wind out of your sails, a double play well. Yeah. You know, in, in Iowa State, you got you to gotta tip your hat a little bit so far in this game, making plays when they need to. 1-1 one, one is a check swing that bounces fair. Jordy Ball will tag her out and end the inning. That was weird, but it's in. I had already put Booney getting at first base on my score sheet, but it looks like I'll have to erase it. Fly ball to left field, and Spellhog is there for the first out of the inning. One thing I did want to mention in a, our third inning shout-outs here is a special hello. We appreciate you. Congratulations on your medical retirement to Kelly Bryce, one of the greatest Sooners of all time. Without a doubt. So happy retirement, Kelly. No bigger fans than yours truly and DJ Sanchez. As the first pitch to Coleman misses low and away, ball one. Second time through the lineup for the Sooners. As Coleman walked her first time up, but then was doubled up. I've got to say, too, not just one of the greatest Sooners on the field as far as Kelly Bryce, but what an awesome person. I mean, one of the most fun, hilarious, just great people. 1-0 pitch, misses two balls and no strikes. That's been one of the things that since I started doing this in 16 that I've really challenged myself is really respect and understand the rich tradition and history of Sooner softball that goes, you know, pre-Low and pre-Kalani. Jen Stewart's of the world is a 2-0 pitch, misses low, ball three. And, and that was the era. I mean, that group was part of the reason I wanted to be a Sooner. I mean, they were before me. I didn't get to OU until 2006. But that crew and everything that they did and accomplished and the groundwork that they laid for this program, that was why I wanted to come here. That was why the, my teammates wanted to come here. Um, why the Kalani Ricketts and that crew. 3-0 pitch isn't anywhere close. And for the second time today, Jada Coleman has walked. Here's Jocelyn Allen. I had mentioned earlier that this was a big weekend in the sport of softball and only brought up the Big 12 match of the Texas Oklahoma State game, which starts tonight a little bit later on this evening. Clemson is at Florida State in a matchup of 17 versus 4. Arkansas and Florida are playing out in Gainesville this weekend. Alabama and A&M and UCLA battling Oregon State. How about Washington and Oregon as Oregon tries to get back on track? So some huge series across this great sport. Alo looking to dig the Sooners out of a 3-1 hole. First pitch is low and in for ball one. Grounded back to Spellhog and started a 1-4-3 double play. 
kind of took that wind out of the sails of the Sooners in the first inning. Yeah, again, you, you, we were kind of talking about it before, before the break with a strike inside there, but the Sooners have had a few things going, and then Iowa State has, we've seen two double plays, one routine, one not so routine, looking a little out of the ordinary, but again, coming up big with a few plays, coming up clutch. Iowa State has been clutch with runners in scoring position so far. 1-1 one, one pitch nearly hits Ala. And here's where the Cyclones and Spellhog, I mean, she comes out, gets a quick out, one pitch, one out of Riley Boone. And then the walk to Jada Coleman. Now sitting 2-1, almost hits Jocelyn Allo. This is where she needs to throw strikes. 2-1 is bounced into left field, a base hit. I mean, Allo pounded that one into the dirt, and there wasn't even a leap from Pond at third base. Oklahoma getting things cooking here with one out in the third. Here's T.R.A. Jennings. Great job. And again, I think that was a missed spot by Spellhog. We could kind of see Ramos set up on the outer half of the plate. And Allo taking it to the left side of the field. But what a huge opportunity here. A huge at bat for Jennings with a runner in scoring position to get something done, get something moving here for the Sooners. 3-1, the Sooners trail at bottom the third. Here's the first pitch to Jennings in the dirt. Got away from the catcher. Coleman on the way to third. Slides in safely. Allo slides in safely at second without a throw. Boy, for a moment, it looked like Ramos had located that in enough time to maybe get Coleman at third. But Jada beat the tag and beat the throw. I love, love, love the heads up base running. That is the stuff that, I mean, everyone wants to know what sets OU apart from others. Well, well, yeah, they're leading the country in basically everything, but they do the little things well. We see a ball in the dirt. That ball wasn't getting away from Ramos, but we saw Jada Coleman read it immediately, read the down angle, and she was gone. That is what those small things, those small details is what sets the Sooner team apart from others. One thing you'll notice about Iowa State, they really are big on slowing the game down. Mm -hmm. So you just had all the infield come together in the circle. They'll do this several times during a game when they sense momentum shifting. And this is a big momentum shift here with Tiare Jennings taking the first pitch outside for ball one. And Coach Jamie Pinkerton from Iowa State, he's been in the game for such a long time and his when I was in school, he was at the University of Arkansas as the head coach. Right. Then as a coach, when I was coaching, he was at the University of Montana. So it's this game within the game that he plays and has always done it and played it well. 2-0 pitches fouled off to the right side, two balls and a strike. Regardless of what happened in their Saturday and Sunday, well, I keep saying that, last week was Thursday, Friday, Saturday. In the Friday, Saturday games against Texas Tech, Iowa State still owns one of the bigger wins in the Big 12 this year, having knocked off Oklahoma State. Handing the Cowgirls their only Big 12 loss. The 2 1 pitch to Jennings is a little low. Three balls and a strike. Big spot here. As the day progresses, we see the crowd building out at Home Run Village. Maybe TRA Jennings has a souvenir for you out there. The 3 1 pitch just pops out off the net. The, the crazy thing about T.R.A.'s numbers is, yes, she had a rough weekend against Texas in which she went 0 for 10. But whenever she's getting hit, she is driving in runs. She's had a multiple RBI game, including one last night. There's a bouncer to short. It gets away from the shortstop. Ranchez can't find it. Jennings reaches. Run scores. It's 3-2. to two. The Sooners have cut it to one. Jennings... Again, seeing lots of pitches, using the dirt and forcing Iowa State to make a play. You could see right off the bat, coming in hard, trying to catch the ball on the run and make a play. Because even at first base, that was going to be a tough play on the run and forcing, again, Iowa State to either make a play. And in this case, we saw them make a mistake. So it happens when you use the dirt. They're going to give Tiare a single. There's Grace Lyons. Fourth hit of the game for the Sooners. First and third bouncer foul. All right, here's my stat that I was trying to get to whenever Jennings drove in that run. 
She has had full four multi-RBI games in the last seven. 14 runs batted in in the last seven games. And in three of those games, she didn't get a hit. So that kind of, it shows you even through her 0 for 10 streak, she was still able to make things happen when she got a touch on. She's trying to make things happen here. She'll take off and steal second base as Grace Lyons takes strike two. They didn't even try to throw down. There wasn't even an attempt. If there's one thing the Sooners are doing today, it's snagging some bags. The steal by Jennings is the fifth stolen base already this game for the Sooners. And we kind of talked about that earlier in the game of controlling the momentum for the Sooners and where they're trying to do oh, that. two base hit right side into right field. Scoring easily is Ilo. Jennings turned hard, but will slide back into third. And we're knotted up at three on an RBI single through the right side by Grace Lyons. Grace Lyons coming up with it again. But again, I love, love, love the base running. The base running this game has been huge for the Sooners. Again, Coleman scoring because he reads the ball down. The huge turn, Coach Gasso giving that late hold. It's intentional. It's intentional. I'm going to send you until, but your job is to watch the throw and hold so that way Grace Lyons can now get in scoring position and draw the throw. Aaron Jackson has joined Jamie Pinkerton in the circle as we have our second, if you will, timeout this half inning by Iowa State. They hit pause and the entire team came together in the circle. This time, an official circle visit as Jamie Pinkerton and Aaron Jackson walk off stride for stride. And Iowa State is doing everything they can do now to try to slow down this crowd and this momentum from the Sooners. Jennings rounded third hard, mm -hmm. looked like she was going to come home and hit the brakes and slid back in safely at third. Lions wisely took advantage of it to move up 60 feet to second. So here's Kinsey Hansen with a chance to put the Sooners back on top. She grounded out to second in her first at bat. Second and third, one out, 3-3 three, three game. Line drive fouled on the right side and slicing well out of play. Oklahoma answers the three-run top half of the inning with a couple of runs of their own. Here in the bottom of the third. No balls and a strike as Jennings digs in. Or pardon me, Hanson digs in with Jennings at third. The 0 one pitch is just a little out. One ball, one strike. Right at the front step of the Sooner dugout is Jocelyn Alla. Shouting encouragement towards Kinsey Hansen. There she is. The consummate leader for this Oklahoma Sooner softball team. Next to her is JT Gasso, one of the best hitting coaches in the game. The 1 1 pitch is a little up, two balls and a strike. That's one thing that, that JT has constantly talked about is how. Information sharing is just consummate. You see Jana Johns, who's on deck, gets over and debriefs with JT. What'd you see? The hard work of the video crew. Like Whitley Simmons to cut it all up. The two one is up high three and one. Well, in, in the game, it even in in inning to inning, pitch to pitch, batter to batter, the game is always changing. I mean the what you see and try to pass on, that's part of the reason this offense, this offense. It kind of pass the bat, pass the torch. They do that partly because they communicate so well. What are you seeing? What was the mistake you made? 3 1 pitch lined off the glove of Allen at first. She'll race and beat Hanson to the back. Here comes Jennings, who'll slide in safely at home. I don't know if that was the original plan, but Jennings broke late at third and scores the go ahead run on a Hard hit ball down the first baseline. And we saw her freeze because of the line drive, but as soon as she saw Allen turn her back, she took off. That was tough because she couldn't tell if Allen had caught it at first. 
It's an RBI ground now, and the Sooners take a 4-3 to three lead. The runner, Lions, stayed at second, and the first pitch is in for a strike to Jana Johns. So two outs now. Johns drove in the first run of this game that gave the Sooners a one-zip lead at the time. Sooners have put three on the board here in the bottom of the third to retake the lead 4-3. to three. The 0-1 popped up foul back towards us. Off that new netting. That is a point of pride, people. <laughs> I was here. We were all here when it went down. Yeah. It was a little bit concerning. It looks good, though. No balls and two strikes. The pitch. Outside, one and two. I think one thing for Spellhog, and we're starting to see this sooner dugout come to life, but for Spellhog, we've seen her work ahead, throw good pitches. I feel like some of those misses now, as we see the, the two strike fouled off, but some of those misses are starting to be big misses. Earlier in the game, first and second inning, throwing pitchers pitches on counts. The misses were close, and I think that's why we're seeing the Sooners chase a little out of the zone. They've adjusted. Understatement. The one-two, blown away two and two. I say one of the biggest games of this year was the Wednesday night game against Tulsa. And they came out here, and some might say, Plank, you're just saying that because it's your alma mater. No, no, no. <laughs> they came out here with the game plan that they were going to take advantage of the dirt, the 2-2 pitch. I'll foul it for now. And they did. They stole bases, and they played a little small ball, and they ended up winning 9-zip. That was after kind of a frustrating Saturday against UAB where Oklahoma couldn't get any offense going until the sixth inning of that game against UAB. They came out here and just used their speed and played a little small ball, if you will. The 2-2 pitch, no ball three. It was very similar to what we're seeing here tonight. And again, OU putting that pressure on Iowa State. We saw them put the pressure on Tulsa, and that game quickly got out of hand without any home runs. That's right. You know, and so we're seeing that here. Iowa State is trying to control this game. 3-2 pitch, foul straight back again. Again, just applying pressure. Lions stands at second. The Sun has made an appearance here at Marita Hines Field. It's 4-3 Sooners in the bottom of the third inning. John's looking to add to that one-run lead. The full count pitch is lined deep to right center field, and it's out of here. A home run by Janet Johns. Just out of the reach of Ochoa, who climbed the wall and tried to take it to her, or take it from her. John's airplanes into home plate, and that ball gives the Sooners a 5-3 lead. You've got to love the response. I'll make it six. Sorry, I keep forgetting about Lions at second. Coming off of a three-run inning. Oh. Man, an opposite field, no less. Look at how close Ochoa came. She gets up and, oof. I mean, that barely cleared the wall. There was part of me that thought it was going to bounce off the top of the wall. Well, it was this same broadcast spot where I called a ball just like that gone, <laughs> and it hit off the top of the wall. So I was being very careful. 6-3 Sooners. First pitch to Snow is low for ball one. A five-run explosion for the Sooners here in the bottom of the third inning after they fell behind 3-1 to one in the top half of the third. Snow is one for one, singled and stole a base in the second inning. And she lines this one to left center field, falling fast, down for a hit. A two-for-two two game for Taylor Snow. And for a snow on the season, her 11th multiple hit game. A 
home runs this season brought to you by Whataburger, now available curbside. Download the Whataburger app for more. Janice hiding behind Jocelyn Allo there in that green foul ball. There she is. Reliving the magic of that shot with Quincy Lilio. Cubert. There's the first pitch to Brito, and it's in for a strike. And I'll be curious here with Brito being the ninth batter of the city. How long Iowa State, especially knowing that you've got to put, you've got to play two today. That's how right. long they're going to stick with Spellhog? I would say, with action picking up in the Iowa State bullpen, if Brito Sabor, this is Spellhog's last hit. As the 0-1 pitch is in for a strike quickly, no balls and two strikes. We've seen Spellhog throw some good pitches. Again, get out of a couple jams. And we're we're not super deep into this game, but oh, you putting up a crooked number, answering a crooked number with a crooked number. That's my favorite. <laughs> I love it. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Oh, called strike three. Nice spot by Spellhog. No way with DJ Sanchez. I'm Chris Plank. Our producer today is Grant Wade on the TV side. Dave Jordan in our Le Learfield Radio simulcast as the first pitch to Kaylee Pond, and misses low and away for ball one. Six runs on eight hits for the Sooners. Three runs on three hits for Iowa State. So I was thinking about this in between innings. Has it happened this year that Jordy Brawl's given up three runs in an inning? Maybe against Tennessee. Let's look. As the 1-0 pitch is in for a start. Point being, I love the fact that and I, I fully expect well, her to come out here. She had the three-run double last week by Texas. Yes. So there you yep. go. One, one, one time the base is loaded in the sixth. Okay. Yeah. But it, point being, it doesn't, it doesn't happen, happen very often. often. It does not happen very <laughs> often. I mean, she's shutting people out most of the time, let alone giving up three runs in an inning. I love the answer back. 1-1 one, one pitch misses outside, 2-1. and one. I think we forget sometimes that she's a freshman because she definitely does not act like a freshman. But you got to love the, hey, we got you. We got you. We're going to get this figured out, and we're going to put up five runs. Go throw with a three-run lead. Yeah, in fact, the Tennessee game and the Texas game are the only two games where she's given up three or more earned runs until today as the 2-1 pitch is low for a ball. I mean, <laughs> five innings, one hit, mm -hmm. six strikeouts against North Texas. That Friday night game against, well, Thursday night, first game of the series against Texas, a complete game four-hitter in which she struck out 15. I mean, she basically went almost 14 straight innings without allowing a, a run. Nary a runner. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Bounced foul down the third baseline. With her three strikeouts so far today. Do I have that right? I think I, I might be shorting Jordy a K. Let me double check the official stats. Yeah, with the three strikeouts so far today, Jordy has 171 on the season and just 107 innings pitched. I say just 107 innings pitched. Here's the 3-2. Cold strike three. Got her looking on a butte. One away. Fourth strikeout of the game. Make it 172 on the season. Coming right back. What a great screwball on the outside corner. Right at the knee, just froze. I think she was looking for the walk, but what a great pitch. Here's Casey Simpson. The first pitch to the right-handed hitting second baseman is foul. Oh, that's going to be stuck in my head now. Let's go, Casey, go. Let's go, Casey, go. <laughs> that's that's almost as as stick in your head ofness is that if that's even a word i like it as shay 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 oh, shay yeah. shay 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 the bench chance the dugout chance <laughs> earworm is a good way to put it yeah the 0-1 is a little bit out one ball one strike it gets in there and it never goes away <laughs> you're walking around all of a sudden it's like, let's go okay One ball, one strike. Sooners up 6-3. to three. We're in the top of the fourth inning. A five-run third to answer a three-run third for Oklahoma. 
Iowa State, here's a bunt. Hanson pops out, throws down. Wow, what a play. Two away. Hanson, like a cat, pounced from out behind the plate. And with that momentum, threw a strike to Taylor Snow at first. There's two outs. And that is a play. This is a great placed bunt. And Jordy Ball crashes, but Kenzie Hansen calls her off. Bounces from behind the plate. Two outs for Ramos, who led off the top half of the third with the single that really started the party for Iowa State. First pitch from Ball misses outside. Anything we, you talked about, the hitting adjustment for mm -hmm. the Sooners, anything you've seen Jordy do different this half inning? I think that she's hitting spots better. It, it, I mean, you can talk about counts, this, that, or another, but even if you're behind an account, which we don't like to see, but you're throwing good pitches, I mean, there's you can miss well, and I think she's missing well. The 1-0 pitch to Ramos. Just missed mm -hmm. outside. Yeah, talk about missing well. Right on cue. Great spot. Two balls and no strike. 6 3 sooner lead. The 2 0 pitch. Hard hit towards the sooner dugout foul. I was looking back on the series history that was put together in the Oklahoma game notes and I was thinking about just the last six or seven years of the Iowa State Oklahoma series. There's always one game in the series that kind of makes you scratch your head a little bit. Mm -hmm. A 2 1 pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. And Oklahoma has won 40 straight games, including against Iowa State, including a 9-7 game in the first game of the series last year. What? I know. There's always one of those two games. Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss. On the rise, Jordy Goddard inning over. First pitch from the righty to the left-handed hitting Riley Boone is a little out for ball one. 23rd appearance on the season for Swain. Out of Paris, Texas. The 1-0 pitch. Caught that outside corner. One ball, one strike. I, saw, I had the opportunity to see Swain throw last year as a freshman. She's got pretty good stuff. And when she hits her spot, she's tough to hit. She has a good demeanor about her. Bouncer to the right side, backing up onto the Simpson, the second baseman. Makes the play, and Boone is retired. There's one away. I mean, she's had a couple of really big performances. A 10 strikeout, four and two thirds inning win against Oklahoma State. She struck out 16 earlier this year against Sacramento State. Seven against Loyola of Chicago, 17 strikeouts against Northern Iowa. She faces the top of the Sooner lineup with Jada Coleman, and that pitch drops right in. And she doesn't, she doesn't have overpowering velocity. She hits spots. She relies on her movement. She works horizontal a lot, and then we'll see her change speeds like we just saw her in the pitch before. No balls and a strike. Check swing on a ball that looked to be a little out. One ball, one strike. Thankfully, it was called that way. The umpire saw it as I did. <laughs> but when she is on, man, she is on. She is. And again, she's got good stuff. And again, only as a sophomore. So future is bright in the circle for Swain. The 1-1. One, one. Line drive, center field, base hit. Extend the hitting streak for Jada Coleman. She reaches base for the third time here today. And Jada's hitting streak is now at 11 straight games. Just on fire. Again, 
doing it on all parts of the field. Thought about stretching it into a double, thought better of it. <laughs> she took one heck of a turn, though. <laughs> Jocelyn Allo stands in. One for two on the day, singled and scored a run in the third. Also is grounded into a double play. The first pitch is lifted pretty deep to center field, but not deep enough. Ranging over is Ramos to make the catch on the warning track, and there's two away. One thing I love about all of fly balls is you hear the entire crowd <laughs> go, oh! Oh! You no, know. Look out. <laughs> Hit well, not well enough, but still a good stroke. Here's what's good to see. Swain comes in, got the quick out by Riley Boone. Jada Coleman with the single. Allo, hard out. Right. Little miss hit, but still solid contact. Here's the first pitch to Tiare Jennings. It's low for ball one. I think what you're trying to say here, DJ, they've adjusted, they're following the plan, mm -hmm. and they're hitting the ball hard. They are. You took the words out of my mouth, Plank. Pure luck. <laughs> it's like we've done this a few times together time or, or two. something. Time or two. <laughs> Runner at first, two outs. That's Jada Coleman. Here's the 1 0 pitch to Jennings. It's a little low. TRA singled and scored a run in the third. Still ruled a hit. She is 1 for 2 on the game with a run scored and a run batted in. Here's the 2 0 pitch. Ooh, nice. That thing moving all over the place. Two balls and a strike. Yes, and again, that's why she's effective. She throws multiple speeds. She doesn't just have a fastball speed or a velocity speed and a changeup. She throws at different speeds. <laughs> Love it. She knew it, too, when yes. she threw it. Again, she's got a great, great mound presence about her. 2-1. That was straight gas. Well, up. Deceptive. Yes. I, I yes. think, and that's something the Sooners really struggled with with Dulcini this past weekend. Well, that's the name of the game. I mean, you can throw as hard as you want, but if you if you can't move the ball as that one misses up or change speeds. We, we went back as Jennings walks. Her runners at first and second for Grace Lyons. You think about what Baylor was able to do in the mm -hmm. final game of that series, and... What you saw was a pitcher that had developed another pitch in that changeup and felt confident yep. using it and just made, made it a rough day on the Sooners. That's tough. First and second here for Grace Lyons. She is two for two on the day. Couple runs scored, a run batted in. Takes the first pitch for a strike. Six three Sooners, bottom of the four. We'll crank back up the machine and play two. Second game, 6.30 first pitch. So we got to hustle. No balls and a strike. First and second for the Sooners. The pitch to Lions is a little up. One and one. I was stayed on its second pitcher of the day. Same infield, no changes to their outfield. A show and right, Ramos in center, spell hog in left. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Lions. Little out, two balls and a strike. Pond at third, wrenches it short. Simpson still in at second with a very impressive athletic first baseman. And Angelina Allen, who already made a big play at the plate, is we're going to have a circle visit here. As associate head coach Kate Sinnott will be out to try to make sure that all is right with her young pitcher say a swing circle visits this year brought to you by walden cleaners and laundry where the difference is quality the ponds at third ranch is at short simpson at second we mentioned allen at first with wellett now in behind the plate of swing at first what's the message here dj <laughs> you know Again, we've seen Swain throw good pitches. The walk is not what you want to see to Jennings. I mean, especially going over to, to Grace Lines as hot as she is. But again, hitting spots. And I think I think what Senate was seeing from the dugout is Swain missing big. It's one thing to throw a ball if it's a quality pitch. But 
the first people who know that a pitch has been missed is the person calling pitches and the catcher behind the plate. Meeting's over, the 2-1 pitch to Lions as well up all three, another bad miss. So I'd be curious to know if she told her to put Grace Lyons on, because looking at that pitch, that looked like an intentional pitch up in the zone. Didn't have much velo on it. Let's watch this one. A 3-1. Yep. Fly ball deep to right field. Not deep enough. Ranging back and making the catch on the warning track is Ochoa to end the inning. So the first pitch from Jordy Ball is low for ball one. Oklahoma has won 40 straight games in the series dating back to 2006. The last win for Iowa State came on April 22nd of 2006 in Ames. Iowa won that game 5-2. Since then, the Sooners haven't lost to Iowa State, but they've played some close games. Here's the 1-0 pitch. The hitter. And that's how the Coca-Cola fifth inning starts for Iowa State as Natalie Wellett is hit by a pitch. And at the top of the lineup, Carly Spellhawk. Looks like they're going to pinch run here for Wellett. And Iowa State will go with Leah Nelson to pinch hit here. So Leah Nelson comes off the bench. I say pinch hit, pardon me, pinch run. But you, we were talking about the 2000, the 2021 game last year in Ames. The first night was a 9-7 Sooner win. Oklahoma was up 9-1 in the seventh inning of that game. And Iowa State came back and nearly had a chance to walk it off. Here's the thing. Anything can happen in Ames, Iowa. <laughs> That's right. I've seen it snow in the middle of a game. There's the first pitch to Spellhog, which is low and in for ball one. 2020, obviously, COVID shut the season down. And Oklahoma had gone to Iowa State in 2019. We ended up playing a doubleheader on Friday and then had to play on Sunday. It was an 8-3 game in there. 2019 as the 1-0 pitch is a little low for a ball. I'll never forget, and anyone on that 2016 roster will remember it like it was yesterday, or at least they try to forget it. And Oklahoma went to Ames, and literally it rained almost the whole game. And finally, they started fixing the field, which had puddles on it in the sixth inning. Here's the 2-0 pitch, low and in. 3-0. Spellhog is all over the place in the batter's box. She is, and she's moving mid-pitch. Like, she's trying to... And we see Coach Rocha going out. Hit by pitch behind 3-0, but... Yeah. Again, kind of all over the place. Moving back in the box. She's trying to anticipate where the pitch is going to be. Are they, are they picking something here, you think? You know... I don't, I, I, we've watched Jordy Ball pretty closely, and I'm yet to see people pitch, pitches off of uh -huh. her. I'd, I'd be hard pressed to say yes. You know, it could just be something that they sort of do, but, you know, it's interesting when you talk to different hitting coaches. I mean, I always coach by most hitting coaches who said you don't move around in the box, you stay where you're at, and you adjust your zone, you adjust your timing. But, there are some hitting coaches who, who move their hitters around. Um, not usually left and right. Usually we see it up or deep. <laughs> up in the box, yes. yeah. Yes. Meeting is over from Jen Rocha. There she is. The standout pitching coach. Has a handful of rings. Now time is called by the first base umpire as the ball got loose from the Sooner bullpen. a part of the coaching staff now entering her fourth season as the 3-0 pitch is in for a strike, 3-1. The fifth time that the Sooners have allowed three or more runs in a game this year. It's a crazy stat in itself, I'll tell you. By the way, this is the 41st game of the season, which is <laughs> just pure insanity. It's hard to believe. We're getting to the, the tail end of this. The 3-1 pitch. Popped up on the infield. Grace Lyons called off by Janet Johns, who came streaking across. Yeah, it's, it's wild when you think about it. 
after to after this week and after tomorrow the Sooners will only have three regular season home games left now there's a really really good chance they're gonna host a regional and if they can move on a super regional but it's mayhem one away for Michaela Ramos she digs in from deep in the box swing and a miss it's interesting they I was trying to double check the number of games that Ramos actually truly catches they use her and well it quite a bit in fact she was listed in the starting lineups as the catcher then they do the swap to DP to allow him another potential sub rotation substitution excuse me the 0 one foul at the plate and she is as advertised at the plate 341 average hitting almost 400 with runners on base for uh, 392 leads the team with 13 home runs 23 extra base hits she's a problem she is and you know up and down this Iowa State lineup this is a this is a pretty solid offensive team and you know they 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 take off they run the base as well and again we see high average numbers overall oh two pitches popped foul I did notice though with Nelson pinch running at first Right as Jordy Ball started in her rotation. Over at first, Nelson started mm -hmm. pointing as if she saw something in either maybe the way Ball would grab the ball out of her glove. Now she pointed, if she was pointing that it was an inside pitch, it was an outside pitch yeah. because she started pointing back across. And you can see Iowa State trying to do anything yeah. they can to pick, to get some sort of leg up. No balls and two strikes. Same thing. Ground ball foul. Well, here's the thing, though. From first base, yes. I mean, you can pick pitches unless you have some sort of verbal cue. There's not much as the batter in the batter's box, especially as late as she's calling. Trying to, trying to signal in and out. A lot easier to do from second. No balls and two strikes. Almost hit her as it came well in. One, two. Oklahoma six, Iowa State three. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Cyclones have a runner at first here after a leadoff hit by a pitch. A one two. Swing and a miss. Two away. Fifth strike out of the game for Jordy Ball, the second of Ramos. There's Angelina Allen. And that's a big one. Ramos with the the RBI double back in the third, but great pitch. Working down in the zone, great movement. Two way. See if Ball can get the Sooners back in the dugout here. As the sun shines, the wind picks up a bit, and swinging at that rise for strike one. No balls in a strike. A good location. Called strike on that outside corner, 0-2. That location has been a little inconsistent today. Whether or not it's a ball or a strike, it's good to see. A little. <laughs> I was being nice. Oh, you know. <laughs> um, but good to see. If she starts getting that call again, she can start expanding out. We're going to start seeing chases on the outer half. 0-2. Swing and a miss, just like DJ said. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Oklahoma on top of Iowa State, six to three. Sooners. Kinsey Hansen leads things off for the Sooners here in the bottom of the fifth. First pitch low for ball one. Oklahoma six. Iowa State three. Kinsey Hansen on the day. 0 for two, but does have an RBI. 
And that pitch skipped well early. Is that a sign of anything when you see that happen for a pitcher, just maybe a loss of grip? Or Yeah, you know, you kind of saw Swain kind of like tap his be like, oh, yeah, that was me. But a lot of times when we see pitchers who throw a lot of off speed, again, like Swain, at times maybe she doesn't quite have that grip, gotcha. slips out. 2-0 to Hanson is right down Lindsay. Two balls and a strike. Happens more than once. You might want right, to have issue. a chat and be like, what's going on? Inevitably, 9.9 .9 out of 10 times after that happens, a pitcher kind of looks at the catcher and, <laughs> like you saw from Swain, my uh, bad. Yeah, sorry. 2-1 is a ground ball to third, backhanded, drop, on, picks it up, throws across. No, not in time. I wonder if Jamie Pinkerton will challenge this. He has a great vantage point of yeah. it in the Iowa State dugout. And truly, there was a little bit of hesitation I was, on the safe call. <laughs> At first, our first base umpire today, Kaylee Young, thought that she was going to ring her up and call her out at first, but then she decided safe. And as you can see, the Iowa State head coach, Jamie Pinkerton, not challenging this play first. No better seat to see that play at first base than what he has. And the Sooners will pin run hand to court. Let's see, what do you think? You make the call as we watch the instant replay. <laughs> safe? Yeah, Ty goes to the runner, yeah, right? Safe. Isn't that what they always told you in Little League? But I understand the hesitation. I mean, she was winding up, getting ready to punch her. Yeah, she safe. thought about it for a second. So Hannah Kaur will be called upon to pinch run for the Sooners. Maybe. Maybe Hannah Kaur might be the best defensive outfielder on this roster. Now, Jada Coleman might have something to say about that. But <laughs> the freshman out of Norba Linda, California. Is at first as Jana Johns digs in. What a day so far for Jana Johns as the first pitch is up high for ball one. It's 6-3 Sooners. And this is what Jana Johns did her last time up. Broke out the power stick and launches it over the right field wall. Two-run bomb. Gave the Sooners a five-run third and put them on top 6-3, to three, which is where we are here. One ball, no strikes. John's showing bunt. Swings to protect Core, who got a late break, and she's safe at second because the ball didn't stay in Ranchez's hands. Well, it is back behind the plate, and the Sooners have obviously found something they want to take advantage of when she's behind the plate. And you said it exactly, taking advantage of what could be, I mean, in the scouting report, if you will, and we've seen the Sooners running a ton on Iowa State, a weakness, and it's getting exposed here tonight. Sixth stolen base of the game, the 1-1 one -one pitch to Johns. Wow, that thing was rocketing off the top of the Oklahoma dugout. I mean, that hit right where the netting is, and I think it scared just about everyone on the front facing <laughs> of the Sooner dugout. By the way, for Hannah Kaur, chalk up stolen base number five on the season in her young career. She's got a chance to be special with her speed and defense. The one-two is another wild pitch off to third goes Kaur. And here's where, again, that's the second time this inning we have seen that off speed in the dirt. We want to see off-speed in the dirt intentionally. Right. And we can see right now it's not. It's just getting away from Swain. That's going to be an issue. That is something she relies on heavily to keep hitters off balance. Two balls and two strikes. The pitch. Swing and a miss. She chased the rise, and there's one away. Coming back. That's a quality pitch. With the huge miss. I mean, and this just worked. Now, here's the thing. A little bit of undisciplined hitting by Jana Johns. That started well out of the zone, and you could see it all over Jana Johns' face. A little out of character for her, because that pitch started way up in the zone. That is just the second strikeout of a Sooner hitter here today. As Kalen Snow, who's two for two and has stolen a base, bounces one back to the circle. The play is going to be to nowhere. Snow is safe at first. Core wisely didn't break on contact. 
And by the time Swain fielded the hard chopper, high chopper, she only had one play, and that was to eat it. <laughs> Taylor Snow finding a way to get it done tonight. Using the dirt. Making Swain field her position. Didn't bounce on that quickly. I, I think third baseman had a better play than Swain yeah, did. Yeah, too. Maybe that was where some confusion reigned, at least in that instance. Patty Gasso taking a long look at the call sheet here as Alyssa Brito waits to dig in. What could be up Coach's sleeve with runners at first and third. Infield in for Iowa State. In at the corners. We haven't seen a squeeze tonight. We haven't seen a I'd squeeze I'd be curious. Hmm. First pitch to Brito. Runner goes off the second again. Cut off by the second baseman. Core got a little too far off the bag, but sneaks back in. And that's for the Sooners. Stolen base. Number seven in this game. One ball, no strikes. Second and third. One out. Ooh. It either hit, yeah, it hit her. But they're, they're checking with the third base umpire to make sure that it didn't hit her glove, or her bat, excuse me. That's, ooh, yeah, that caught her on the arm. That's a scary play. Thankfully, Brito is okay, and the bases are loaded. Oof. Almost looked like she swung, and in fact, that's what Jamie Pinkerton is out asking right now. Did she swing? Grace Green is going to be called upon to pinch hit. I wonder if we may see a challenge here. I'm awful because the pitcher in me is watching that on the replay going, that's a strike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, again, I think that's a tough call. I think it's tough to to overturn that. I don't think either uh, either field umpire had a real great view with where they posi were positioned. Yeah, that's that's so tough for me if you're, especially with a right-handed hitter, to point down to that third base umpire whose back is to the play to see whether or not he or she thought it was a swing. I mean, I, and again, I know in that instance, your, your other umpire is positioned behind mm -hmm. the bag at second base, but... Yeah, there's no one that has a really good view on that. Now there, the explanation has been given. So if I understand the replay rules, as I have tried to understand them after last week's controversy about whether or not you could challenge stepping out of the batter's box, you cannot. Mm -hmm. You can't challenge stepping out of the batter's box for those that have asked a bazillion times this week, and understandably so, why that last play wasn't challenged. I can't help but wonder if a play like this is in that realm of you can't challenge it. I feel I, like it is, because I yeah. think if it were able to be, I think Pinkerton I think, would yeah, have. Jamie would have challenged it. All right, so here we go. Well, it loads the bases up for the Sooners. With one out here in the bottom of the fifth inning, and Oklahoma will call upon Grace Green. Grace Green, first pinch hit appearance since April 10th when she walked and scored a run against Texas Tech. Back, I apologize, this is her first pinch hit appearance since April 9th. She came in as a defensive substitution in that game and then ended up getting in a bat. She had a three-run homer, a bomb, against Texas Tech. First pitch to Gray Screen is a little out for ball one. Uh, we'll give Wellett kudos for trying to pull that pitch back in. And ball, no strikes. Jada Coleman waits on deck. Good pitch right down the middle. One ball, one strike. So you got Brito at first, Taylor Snow at second, and Hannah Core at third. Pretty, pretty good speed on the bases. Anything in the gap, I would imagine Brito might give it a try. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. A little up, 2-1. Green hitting here in what was Riley Boone's spot. The intricate preparation that goes into when and who to use in pinch hit situations. 
It's intriguing to follow. The 2 1 is a little low, ball three. You know, it's tough to do with a smaller roster, yeah. let alone a larger roster than we've seen because mm -hmm. of COVID. But when you also have bats off the bench who are putting together some of the things that we've seen, Lindsay Elam and what she does in the pinch yep. hitting role, I mean. It's unreal. The 3 1. We pull back in for a strike, full count. I think the only thing I want, I want that pitch to either be a strike all or the no. time or not be a strike. <laughs> if it's a strike, awesome. If not, what are you doing? Three balls and two strikes. Grace is ready. With the bases low to the pitch, it is popped up right side, shallow right field, racing in on a late break. The catch is made by Ochoa. And unfortunately, Cole. Core is unable to tag at third, and there's two outs. Ochoa was coming in with a head of steam. That could have gone south real quick, especially with this wind. But coming in tough, huge out, big pitch by Swain. Massive. Man, big opportunity here for Iowa State to maybe get out of an inning. But you got Jada Coleman at the plate, and she's hot as ever. Bases loaded for Jada. What a night she's already had. The first pitch is a little up ball one. Jada's walked twice, scored a run, single in the fourth inning, extending her hitting streak now to 11 straight games. She stole a base, one of the seven the Sooners have stolen here this afternoon, the 1-0. In for a strike, one and one. And I'm going to say, too, with what we've seen tonight, I mean, Sooners have strung things together, absolutely, but part of the reason there's six runs on the board is good base running. Having runners in scoring position. 1-1 one, one is a little up ball, too. It's been impressive. You talk about the stolen bases and the aggressiveness, but also the heads-up base running, taking extra bases. It's always amazing to me how many runs get taken off the board because of bad base yep. running. Maybe. We've seen it maybe here tonight. Yes. A bit from the Sooners. Here's the 2 1 pitch to Coleman. Ball three low. Jocelyn Allo waits on deck. Boy, Jada Coleman with her two walks already tonight. 34 walks on the season. A foul ball. She is some kind of run over these last 11 games, having one heck of a season, one of two Sooners to start every single game so far this season. Three balls and two strikes with a base is loaded and two outs. The pitch is popped up. Not quite to shallow left field, but far enough out where Ranchez, the shortstop, Ranges makes the catch and ends the fifth. We have home run village. Great chance to enjoy Sooner softball. But then the ambiance of the game is the first pitch to Ochoa here in the top of the sixth inning. He's outside for ball one. Sooners lead it six to three here as we start the sixth inning. Asia Ochoa is one for two, a double that drove in a couple runs. It was a strikeout victim in the first. One ball and no strikes, the pitch. A little low. I was going back through the history of this series with Iowa State, and looking back on some of the closer games that have been played. Now, to be fair in this current 40-game win streak that the current Sooners have over Iowa State, and there's been some blowouts. They not one of those. 2-0 pitch is fouled back. We mentioned a game last year, a 9-7 game on the first night in 2021 in Ames. I mentioned the tight game they had in 2019 and 2018. They had a 9-5 game, 7-1 game in 20 to six in 2017. There's a game or two in there that's fairly close between these two teams. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Oh, that just misses outside, ball three. I was bringing up that 2016 series. 
and that Oklahoma had with Iowa State in Ames. The first game of that series on a Friday night was a 4-2 game before Oklahoma ended up sweeping the series. An 8-1 and 12-1 win, so. In these three game sets, usually you're going to get a pretty good right hook from Iowa State in one of them. The Sooners have tonight. That 3-1 pitch misses outside ball four. That is the second straight inning that Jordy Ball has put the leadoff runner on base with essentially a free pass. The hit by pitch of well to start the fifth, and now the walk to Ochoa here in the sixth. And a little bit out of character, but it, I think Jordy Ball has been good tonight so far in this game. I think that she's made adjustments as the game has gone on. Have I seen her sharper? Absolutely. There's the first pitch to Alicia Ranchez. She's moving her out of the box, too, and couldn't check her swing in time without her eyes for strike one. That's my thing with moving in the box. I feel like it's one of those things, if you're going to get up in the box, do it. If you're going to toe up on the plate, do it. Uh, the moving around, I think, gets a little, little dicey. The 0-1 is in for a strike. No balls and two strikes. Ball got loose from the Iowa State pin. Riley Boone, who re-entered the game after getting pinch hit for, retrieved it. No balls and two strikes. Alicia Ranches showing that half swing and will line this one to right center field and deep. It'll take a bounce and hit the wall. On her way to second is Ranches, and she's going to be thrown out from center field by Jada Coleman. What a throw by Jada Coleman off the carom. Throws a strike to Grace Lyons. Wow. They're going to review it. But man, talk about playing the ball off the wall. Here's what I love, Jada Coleman. Oof, I think she was out. Well, I, I understand wanting to challenge yep. that, but here is here is my experience, and, and maybe today helps because with the Valley's sports broadcast, the Sooner Sports TV broadcast, you have several different angles. The problem is we have not yet truly had a good angle at second base. Now, there's been adjustments and there's been changes to different placement of cameras. We got a great look down the lines for foul balls, but... I feel like a majority of the challenges so far here at Marina Hines Field, DJ, have been at that second mm -hmm. base position in a play like this. And usually the angle that you're wanting to, to, to get, you don't. Yeah. Or, like this, I mean, this is a great camera work, but you can't Even really see there, the you base. Can't yeah. See. You can't see. And we'll see this here. Now, this, this is, is one of the replay the angle here. And they've indeed ruled her out. Yeah, that's yeah. not even close. No, and I do understand, though, especially it's coming from angle. the coach's box or coming from the dugout, when you see the tag go down on the back side, you go, why not challenge it? Did she get her hand in there? We're going to see a pitching change here for the Sooners with one out in the top of the sixth inning. Jordy Ball's day is not necessarily done with the re-entry rule in college softball. But... It looks like the Sooners are going to go with Nicole May here. The big misses are what I saw, and that's, I think, a little bit out of the ordinary for her. First pitch to Kaylee Pond is looped in the left field, a base hit. Iowa State cuts into the Sooner lead. It's now 6-4 to four on an RBI single by Kaylee Pond on the first pitch for Nicole May. Well, told you. <laughs> These Iowa State Cyclones are fit givers this season, and this is the 18th appearance of the season for Nicole May. That run will be credited to Jordy. Her ERA is at .91 on the season, 53 and two-thirds of an inning, 68 Ks to 15 walks. First pitch swinging again, popped up on the infield. This time Jennings has, and there's two away. Iowa State, they've put some good at-bats together. They're see they've seen a lot of pitches. They've left some runners on base. Yeah. I mean, let's be real. I mean, this game, it's a tight game right now. This game, 
could be a this could be a tie game if Iowa State clutches up in a couple different situations. Here's Skylar Ramos. Left-handed hitting center fielder who is actually not had a bad game for his pitch. Ground ball to first. Snow will take it to the bag and in the inning. Well, Nicole May gives you athletics. Here's Jocelyn Allo to lead things off for the Sooners in the bottom of the sixth inning with OU on top, six to four. The first pitch misses low for ball one. Back to work is Swain in the circle for Iowa State. And they've actually gone with a different catcher here as Fuentes has checked in behind the plate. Angelita Fuentes. Ground ball back up the middle, through into center field. A base hit for Jocelyn Alla. Jossie with a two-hit game as she's two for four. Here comes T.R.A. Jennings. Six to four, you, you feel confident, mm -hmm. but wouldn't mind adding a few insurance runs just to be safe. Yes. Just to be safe. And that was, I can almost guarantee you that was the conversation in that dugout, yeah. in the huddle going into this. We need to tack on a few, if not in this game, you know, but giving a little bit of a cushion. Iowa State is not just going to roll over. There's the first pitch to T.R.A. It's in for a strike. Also, too, I mean, Swain's gotten out of some big big jams bases mm -hmm. loaded jam she hasn't not given up a run since she's been in the game that's true no balls and a strike the pitch outside one and one six runs on 11 hits for the Sooners Iowa State four runs on five hits they have the one air Sooners have left seven runners on base including stranding the bases loaded after loading them with one out in the fifth. A one one pitch misses up and away. Two balls and a strike. Two balls and a strike. Hard hit ball to third. This could be two to second for one to first. They turned it. Wow. 5-4-3 double play. That is the third inning-killing double play for the Sooners this afternoon. Mm. One came on the base paths. One, well, one in the first inning, one in the second, and now one in the sixth. And Patty Gasso is going to slow things down and chat with Grace Lyons. There again, good pitch by Swain. A little bit of off speed. And Iowa State tonight, I know they've got the one air on the board, but overall they have been solid defensively and with Swain in the circle so far, she's hanging goose eggs. I wonder if we'll see Swain to start the second game for Iowa State. I would be curious to see the game plan there. Hmm. Here's Grace Lyons. Two outs. 6-4 Sooner lead. First pitch to Lyons is... A little bit low, I guess. It looked like a strike to me. Is, is there a chance, may, just maybe, that the Iowa State catchers have been a little bit over the top sometimes in that move and that the umpires saw the glove movement and thought she was trying to pull it back in? Because that was a really good pitch. I do think Iowa State catchers have been a little loud back there. However, that, that's that was a pretty a good pitch to me <laughs> yeah. as well. Two balls and no strikes. Uh, we've seen it on the opposite end, too. I mean, I think we saw Jordy Ball throw some good pitches yeah. that I'm kind of going, I think, you know, that's a, it's a ball and then throw it again four pitches later and it's a strike. So yeah. Two balls and no strikes. The pitch. A little up. Three no. This is what's got to be frustrating for, say, a swing. You have, you know, Double play, which really kills an inning, and then you fall behind 3-0 to the very next hitter. And off speed. <laughs> Dropped in for a side strike, and Swain lets you know about it. She felt good. I love the confidence. Throwing it 3-0, especially we've seen that pitch be a little erratic at times. In the dirt, slipping out of her hand. Three balls and a strike, the pitch. Ball four. Yeah, that's tough. You get the big... 
five four three, and then coming right back with a with a almost four pitch walk, five pitch walk. Sooners with the walk to Grace Lions. The fourth walk of a Sooner hitter. He had Brito get hit by a pitch earlier, and here's Kinsey Hansen, who has 0 for 3, but you were talking about catcher being loud behind the play. And nice she's, say that. Yeah, she, I think you said that's right. I, I was going to say Kinsey Hansen has been loud despite being <laughs> 0 for 3. She yeah. has. She's put some. She's put some good swings on the ball. And I say loud, loosely, right? I, Iowa State has great catchers, but at times yep. you get that yank coming in too yeah, much. And it, that umpire it's too much. It, yeah. Yep. If we can see it from up here, it's big time yeah. where that umpire is. So Hanson 0 for 3, but it's been loud at the plate. He's hit the ball hard, reached on an air. He takes the 1 0 pitch low for ball 2. Six four Sooners. Looking to add to its lead. Two balls and no strikes. A three a little up. Jana Johns waits on deck. Oh, you. Looked like they were off to a great start in the inning, but then a double play kind of ruined the momentum. Now back-to-back -back walks as ball four misses up high. This is where things get interesting. Again, and I think a little bit of frustration, too, from Swain. She's thrown some decent pitches. Calls not going her way. Um, I saw the catcher for Iowa State turn around and kind of ask the umpire, where is that missing? And said low. Johns on the day has had a day. She's two <laughs> for three with a home run and a single. Takes the first pitch for strike one. Two for three with three runs batted in. That home run for Jana Johns. Put her in double digits for the season. Now five Sooners. With 10 or more home runs on the season. The 0 1 is popped up. Shallow left field. The shortstop ranch as Rach is out. Called off at the last minute by Ramos, and that'll do it for the Sooners. 9 1 and 2 hitters, and the first pitch is a swing and a miss. The strike one in the first at bat of the night for Fuentes, who came in behind the plate last inning. Angelita Fuentes. Yo one nearly hit her one ball and a strike came up and in Ventus has been used quite a bit this season 280 average that one home run she hit earlier this year the one one pitch for May low ball two. Six four Sooners. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Angelita Fuentes out of Seaside, California. Two one is a little up. Three and one. A lot of leadoff free passes tonight, either by walk, hit by pitch. Again, working behind three one here. Nicole May, pinch hitter, bottom of the lineup. There's been a couple. Couple of things get rolling by the bottom of this lineup. Here's the 3 1 pitch. There's a strike. Full count. But both runs, or all runs that have scored for Iowa State, have started, or excuse me, back in the third, started at the bottom of the lineup. Yeah. This 8 9 spot has been a problem. The 3 2 pitch for May. Pop foul. Good piece of hitting by Fuentes to stay alive. Yeah, you look at the 8-9. Skyler Ramos, Natalie Wellett, now 
Angelita Fuentes. They only have one hit, but there's a sack punt in there. There's a hit by pitch in there. They're getting something from the bottom of the lineup is the best way to put it. The 3-2 pitch, ball four. Now the tying run will come to the plate. And Carly Spellhog, the left fielder who's 0 for 2, but has scored a run when she was hit by a pitch in the third. That wind whipping out to straightaway center field. Spellhog hasn't done a ton so far at the plate today. Coming around to score, but. Next pitch in the dirt, ball one. She, a lot of times for this Iowa State team, has kind of been the table setter, getting things done. Part of the reason people like Ramos and Allen have the RBI numbers they do is because Spellhog's on base all the time. Iowa State put six runs on the board in the opening game last year against OU in the seven. There's a pop fly in foul territory, left side and out of play. It was a 9-1 game last year, headed to the seven. Oklahoma had, you might say, run, roll, run, roll. No, no, no. They added it to make it an eight run in that top half of the seventh, and Iowa State just wouldn't go away. 1-1, one, one, bounced foul. Well, that's kind of their MO. They battle. They just battle. And he, I mean, even looking at their scores from this year, it's they they put runs on the board. They don't get shut out often. They should be better. I I, I think they're 21 record. and 21. Yeah. The one two. A little up and away. Two balls and two strikes. Hold on, let me correct myself. It was a 9-2 game, pardon me, headed to the seventh last year. Okay. So he's added that run in the seventh. And then five unanswered from Iowa State. The 2-2 pitch. Rip fouled on the left side. It played around game 24 last year, but it seems as if Iowa State has been a a regular around this this part of the schedule outside of playing in late March last year. Part of me feels like on the years you have to go to Iowa State, that's a blessing. I want to play you in <laughs> April or May. I don't want to go up there in March. No, no, it we're might not be freezing. in March. Two balls and two strikes. The pitch from May. Outside ball three. And again, big misses from May with the curveball there kind of floating off the plate. We want to see that have a sharper break. Three balls, two strikes, the pitch from May. Line drive, left field, falling fast. Diving play is made by Jada Coleman. An incredible full extension leap. Glove first. And she snagged it out of the air for the first out of the inning. Poetry. Big, Poetry in motion. Big time. Like, I was sitting here the whole time watching her go after this ball, and I'm going, she's going to catch that. It didn't even for a minute. I'm like, she's going to lay out, and she's going to catch. You could just see her beat on that ball immediately off the bat. That is why Jada Coleman's so good in the outfield. She reads the ball off the bat as good as anybody. Wow. Unbelievable. Now we're going to have a meeting in the circle. And Into her own here in Norman as a Sooner. First pitch strike from Michaela Ramos. But she's truly, regardless of the level of competition, whoever she's facing, she's been, I mean, she's been as dominant as yeah. anybody this season. No balls and a strike with a runner at first and one out. 6-4, the Sooners lead it. We're in the top of the seventh. Try to check her swing. I don't think she did. I want to say she's safe on that one. I thought she might have turned just a bit, but that's at least one angle that makes sense. That first base umpire staring right down at a right-handed hitter. One ball, one strike. Iowa State very deliberate in their approach. And a runner at first and one out.
Here's the 1 1 pitch. Inside corner, strike two. I like the, the call by coach to bring in Hope Troutwine. We're going through the heart of this lineup. Ramos has, has had one big hit yeah. today. The one two pitch. Cold strike three. Two away. Huge pitch. Because again, this is exactly where Iowa State wanted to be in this situation with their most powerful hitter up. Trout Wang coming in and just freezing. And she just again caught Ramos off guard. The look in her box, I'd be curious to know if she knew that she had two strikes on her. <laughs> she wasn't in plate protection mode. There's Angelina Allen. First pitch, swing and a miss for strike one. Allen on the day, the left-handed hitting first baseman, 0 for 2. Struck out twice, but did walk once. That walk came back with two outs in the first inning. Runner at first here, tying run at the plate, drama in the seventh. The 0 1, swing and a miss, strike two. Slam in the door. I feel it. Troutwine throwing quality pitches, good spots. No balls, two strikes. The pitch up high, one and two. One ball, two strikes. The pitch up high, two and two. I gotta say, this has been a well-played game by Iowa State. They've been clean. They've come up with big hits when they've needed it at times. Swing and a miss. Ball game. Hope Trout Wine shuts the door, and the Sooners win number 40. The final score in game one of a doubleheader against Iowa State, Oklahoma. Puts five on the board in the third inning against the Cyclones and beat them six to four. The Bud Light postgame show is coming up next. You're listening to Sooner Softball, presented by Love's Travel Spots. Love's